presentation on what, what you can do with your marketing degree and also get to talk a little bit about the marketing department itself and what kind of courses they offer. Uh, I should mention, I think I told you this already, Dr. Sherry is a graduate of Notre Dame. Uh, I, I won't say the year, I'll let him do that, but he is uh, an anthropology major. So, and then he converted to the marketing later in life. So uh, he is now our marketing chairman. He's been with us. This, this is your third year, Dr. Uh, fourth year. Fourth year. Fourth year. I'll make a game later for you. <laughs> graduated in uh, 74, right? so it was a long time ago. I doubled in English and uh, anthropology and ended up uh, uh, by a very circuitous way uh, winding up in, in marketing, uh, which I find to be a, a really fascinating subject to study for a number of different reasons, uh, but principally because it's about the most interdisciplinary of the business disciplines. So it, really, it draws on, on uh, you know, quantitative skills, qualitative skills, behavioral skills and so forth. It's a, it's a really uh, kind of a well-rounded approach to understanding business, all right? So um, <clears throat> tell you a little bit about marketing. It's, it's everywhere. This is a dated slide. You guys watched the Olympics uh, this summer, and it was just pervaded by marketing, all right? You just got done watching the Super Bowl. I came out of class a few minutes ago after having discussed a number of commercials that, uh, that came up in the Super Bowl. Mar marketing is part of culture. It is, uh, it is so... Uh, intertwined with culture that theorists now say that it's impossible to say where culture stops and marketing begins, right? So it's a, just a, a fundamentally uh, interesting uh, behavior, all right? And, and this is just by way of trying to sensitize you to how uh, marketing is everywhere. Um, there are a lot of different conceptions of what marketing is all about. This is the most current definition from the American Marketing Association. I'll give you a, a second to look at it. Um, because it doesn't look like your father's marketing definition, I think. Right, it's a set activity, set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Right? So it's not merely just about creating products or creating profit or generating advertising, right? It's, it's much bigger. It looks at relationships. It looks at stakeholders across a range of different behaviors. If you're going to be an effective marketer today, you've got to be an astute political analyst, right? You're just not a clinical business person, but you've got to understand the role of your product or service in the culture because there are lots of stakeholders out there that are affected by it and uh, uh, who may be critical of your practice. As you can see, this definition incorporates uh, a sense of marketing being 
a, a powerful force in society, that it impacts society. This is a, 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 an interesting new wrinkle to the definition. Here at Notre Dame, we've always thought that marketing had a profound impact on society. We've positioned our department around that, right? So, so that you will be taught not only clinical marketing practice, we'll teach you how to manage the four Ps, you know, product, price, promotion, place, and so forth, make you good technical marketers, but we'll also give you a good sense for the impact that marketing has on society at large. It's, it's a, a very influential force, uh, the equivalent of what you see uh, in education and politics and philosophy and religion. And so we take our responsibility very seriously as marketers. There's a huge ethical or moral component that runs through the curriculum. <clears throat> at base, we're really interested in what it is people want and how it is people want. All right? So sometimes we think of ourselves and we get caricaturized all the time in the business press as the science of desire. What is it that you truly want versus what you need? Right? What are the sources of that, of that longing and desire? And how do, we, how do we tweak, how do we inflame, how do we cause you to desire in ways that are positive and pro-social? All right? And so a lot of our courses are, are geared at helping you understand where desire comes from and how to manage it and not just as a marketing manager, but as a consumer yourself, all right? We, we try to promote uh, kind of a more enlightened approach to consumption. You live in a world now where everywhere that you go, you're running into the same products and services everywhere, all right? You, you've got common competitors everywhere in the world. These same brands are gonna, are gonna confront you no matter where you travel. What we try and teach in the marketing department is that each one of these brands has an essence, it has a personality, uh, it is animated not just by the marketer, but by the consumer. Right? So marketers a lot of times have a really good idea of what their brand is, but from their perspective, all right, they don't know a lot of times what the brand means to the consumer. And a big part of our job is, as marketers is to help businesses understand what consumers are all about. So a, a quick example, you guys all have iPods, right? This is, this is one of the most successful, universally dispersed products that we can imagine, right? In Tokyo, when you use an iPod, you use it to avoid disturbing other people. Right? In Chicago, you use an iPod so that other people don't disturb you. All right? it's, it's a completely different approach. The same product, but it creates a different kind of experiential bubble for people. Right? It's a different kind of a phenomenon from one country to the next, even though it seems to be this, the same physical product. So we try to help you understand on, on a global basis exactly what it is uh, uh, you're doing as a marketing manager. Right. Everybody's affected by marketing, everybody, even the Pope. Pope wears Prada. Right. Pope wears Serengeti sunglasses, right? And, and the character of Serengeti, the character of Prada is, is reflected by the Pope and absorbed into the Pope, so these products now have the aura of Popeness attached to it. All right, and, and as marketers, we're really interested in how our products diffuse into the culture at large and what kinds of associations they pick up, right? Because they, they become valuable repositories of meanings for us to tap when we try to influence consumer behavior. Here's a look at the roster in the marketing department. Uh, uh, I've got uh, uh, most of our regular faculty represented here for you. Um, <clears throat> let, me, let me back up here. Uh, most of these folks, uh, let's see, almost all of these folks you'll be exposed to as, as undergraduates. There's a, a few of us that are, are uh, just teaching in the MBA program right now. But by and large, you're exposed to an uh, entire range of, of regular full-time faculty, professional specialists. In red, I've indicated uh, our adjunct professors who are practicing Managers, practicing marketers, these are people out in the real world who are uh, successful at their trade, who come back and give up their time uh, to teach our students about what's going on currently in the world of marketing, right? So you're getting theoretical and practical applications from the faculty members. You're getting theoretical and practical applications from people who are currently practicing. Most of the faculty themselves have had a background as practitioners at one point in their life or another. The two folks indicated in green are, are hires that we've made for next year. So coming into the department next year, uh, we have uh, uh, two, associate prof or two assistant professors, one of which uh, has a specialty in sustainable marketing, 
and the other in international marketing and communication. All right, so our faculty is very inter interdisciplinary. We come from different social sciences. We come from uh, uh, philosophy and the humanities. Uh, we try to give you as holistic a view of marketing as we can so that when you leave Notre Dame, your toolkit, your, your, your set of techniques and the perspectives and approaches that you can apply are likely going to be much broader than any of the other schools uh, whose students you're going to be competing with for jobs, right? You'd be a, a very well-rounded uh, marketing analyst. In particular, as I mentioned before, there's going to be an ethical current that pervades the education, right? Each one of us is concerned about the impact of marketing in society, and so we make sure that each of our courses uh, uh, contains uh, uh, an ethical or moral dimension of decision making that, that runs throughout the course. We have standalone ethics courses as well, right? So we're training, to, training you to be good marketers and to be good marketers. Right? It's a distinguished faculty. So uh, give you just a, a sense of the, of the kinds of people that would be instructing you in the classroom. We have past presidents of professional societies. We have current and past journal editors. Uh, lots of memberships on editorial boards. Uh, many of our faculty have won Best Article Awards. They are Society Fellows, Fulbright Award winners. They've written books. They've chaired conferences. Uh, they've won teaching awards. Um, they're, they're thought leaders of the discipline. Right? I taught at uh, Northwestern at Kellogg for 20 years before coming back to Notre Dame. And one of the reasons that drew me back is just the overall excellence of the faculty, right? And the fact that, that the faculty has such uh, interesting reach. It's a, it's a dimensional kind of a faculty. Each, each of these people is going to give you an insight into marketing and consumption that you can't get anywhere else. When Dean Conlon talks about the MBA program, the way that he describes it to the MBA students, the Notre Dame brand or the Mendoza brand looks like this. You know? He says that we try to uh, cultivate habits of thought, or I'm sorry, habits of mind, which is how you think, habits of heart, which means your value system, and habits of action. Right? And the way that we do that is, is not just through the, uh, uh, you know, the, the learning, uh, the, the, the reading, the lectures, and so forth that you're doing, but it's by the interaction that you have in the class, within the class, on projects, with the marketing club, and so forth. The idea here is that you've got uh, rigor, intensity, and innovative thinking that you're bringing to the curriculum, and then we combine it with issues of community, cooperation, and integrity that arise from the, your interaction with the group. You'll find that a lot of your work uh, that's done in the marketing department uh, relies on individual initiative, but it unfolds uh, in a group process. All right? So we have a very kind of communal approach to education. If we can talk about the different levels of marketing that you'll be exposed to, and, and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll take you through these fairly quickly, um, they're, they're broad topics. We try to uh, develop a philosophy of marketing with you that looks at a uh, general orientation to the marketplace. Then we focus on strategy that tells you literally where and how to compete. We spend time talking about implementation that drops you down into the tactical level, and then we look in every instance, at consequences. What is the impact on all the different environments that you're operating in from your uh, uh, marketing perspective? All right, so we start very broad and we end very micro, looking at uh, consequences and responsibilities. Some courses are predominantly macro and broad. Others are a little bit more micro and narrow, but most classes are gonna take you kind of from top to bottom through all these different hurdles. <clears throat> There isn't anywhere that you can go on this planet to get away from marketing or consumer behavior. Consumption is just a basic human experience, right? Um, uh, many of you recall the recent tragedy at, uh, at Virginia Tech, right? And when people drew together to mourn, all right, the brand was there. Intentionally, unintentionally, it doesn't make a difference, right? Brands are part of your material culture. They're just interwoven throughout your life. And what we try to do as marketers is help you capture that lived experience of brand and translate that understanding that you have into, uh, as consumers into practical applications as marketing managers. I'm going to give you a, a, a snapshot of what the program looks like. I, I guess uh, two different snapshots here, if, uh, if time permits. Um, what I've got marked out in red for you on the left-hand side are the required courses of our majors. Okay, the principles of marketing course, marketing research, consumer behavior, quantitative analysis, and strategic marketing. Those are required courses. Everything else that you see up there uh, would be an elective. 
right? We've identified the core areas that we think are absolutely essential for you to have uh, 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 developing expertise. And then we tried to flesh that out uh, with electives to give you a, a full reach across the spectrum of marketing activities. Um, our curriculum is different from most, uh, you'll see, because we have a, a, a quantitative analysis course that tries to ratchet up your level of quantitative sophistication before you take marketing research. By the time you take marketing research, you've got a set of skills that will allow you to make much better use of that course than you would had you not had the quantitative training. That's unusual. Uh, most marketing departments don't have that, that degree of rigor, most marketing programs. We're also different in the, in the sense that our, our uh, last course there, Strategic Marketing, is a capstone course. That's going to draw on all the experience that you've had in your marketing courses and other business courses together. You'll be put into a, a, a team. You'll run a computer simulation where you're uh, running a corporation, competing against other corporations, and you get to draw on your whole uh, uh, range of experiences as a marketing major to, uh, to complete the requirements of that cat, uh, class. So it's a comprehensive uh, capstone. I've chunked it for you uh, three ways here, um, opportunity analysis, planning, and marketing instruments. So from, from fairly broad to fairly narrow or specific. So we cover the, the entire gamut of marketing activity. Um, you can see that we've got electives in professional selling, uh, product innovation, pricing, um, uh, international, I'm sorry, integrated marketing communication. We'll have next year an international marketing course. We'll also have a sustainable marketing course. So plenty of, uh, plenty of opportunity to branch out. This is a common model that we use to describe what marketing looks like as practiced by the firm. Right? And I'm just putting it up there for you to get a sense of how comprehensive marketing is. Right? From, from the environment to the actual creation of value all the way through generating profit. We have courses that cover every one of those dimensions. All right, so you, as I said before, you're going to be taken from the, from the general through the specific. Right? You'll be uh, good technical uh, marketers. You'll have lots of clinical proficiency when you're done, but you'll also have a good philosophical and strategic understanding of marketing as well. All right, so we're back to uh, that. The sequence of courses that you'll take runs like this, and, and I'm sure that, uh, that you've been reminded already. You begin with the principles course that just lays the foundation, gives you a sense of what to expect for the rest of the major. Then the most common sequence is to take consumer behavior and the quantitative course, and then follow that with marketing research, and then strategic marketing as the capstone course. Right? right now, strategic marketing is only taught in the spring quarter or in the spring semester, so you have to make sure when you're doing your planning that you, may, that you make sure you take that class in the spring, right? Otherwise, you can't graduate in four years. It only comes around once in the rotation, right? So when you're planning, just be aware that that's a, that's a pretty high hurdle to, to be uh, uh, aware of. This, this is just a quick snapshot to indicate that um, that marketing is, a, is really an interdisciplinary practice. We have a lot of double majors. We have a lot of uh, minors. All right, we have uh, uh, people, I do exit interviews with, uh, with seniors every year to talk about their experience of the marketing curriculum. And I'm always struck by how often I hear the strength of the, of the marketing major resides in this dual quantitative qualitative approach, right? People feel that they've gotten a rigorous education, that they're good with numbers, but they also feel that the behavioral side has been developed. They've been able to use their creativity as well as their analytic um, uh, quantitative skills. And you can see that our, our, our student profile kind of reflects that as well. All right. I'll jump up on my soapbox for a minute, and, and it's important for you to hear this all the way through your training. I pull a, 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 some quotes from a, an interview that was conducted with a, a dean at the University of Chicago Business School that I thought was really instructive. Your marketing profs don't think of you guys as customers. Right? By and large, there's a consumer orientation that spread through universities. Our department has resisted thinking of you as students. All right? And here's the, the University of Chicago's take. Our predecessors felt better telling those to whom we charged increasingly large amounts that they were not mere graduate students but customers. One problem, the model is corrupt and corrupting. Treating students as customers doesn't help them develop. Instead of the customer is always right, we ought to go with a version of you get what you put into it. All right? My answer is that we should engage our MBA students with a combination of stretch and support 
Uh, it causes our jobs to shift towards setting expectations and asking more of your students. There isn't anything wrong with the teacher-student relationship. It's only been around for two or three millennia. Okay, so you're, you're going to have a kind of a perverse perspective from your marketing profs, right? We believe that your students, your, your educational experience is way more holistic than if we were to treat you merely as customers, all right? So we're going to be demanding more of you in the classroom than, than just simple memorization and repetition of facts. It's going to be a, a, a profound engagement, and we expect a, a lot of interaction and pushback in the, uh, in the classroom. Our, our expectation is that uh, maybe half of the educational experience is going to be created by you guys. Right? We set the stage for that to happen, provide you the material, but a lot of the progress in the classes is going to depend upon the way that you handle it. Here's just a quick snapshot based on the most recent data that I have, uh, um, an example of the kinds of salaries, the kinds of uh, regions that you might end up with, the kinds of jobs that you're likely to take uh, at an intro level here. And I'll, I'll flash through these just to give you a sense of the stretch and the range. We place students in a range of different uh, uh, organizations in the communications area. You can see a number of firms there and the associated uh, jobs in brand and product management. It's sales and customer service, consulting and research, retailing. Uh, you guys all know that we've, we've got this number three ranking. Um, one of the reasons that we have it, and, and there are a number, I mean, uh, certainly faculty excellence is going to contribute to it. But at the end of the day, it's the excellence of the career services people that really make a difference, right? People want to come here not just because we're Notre Dame and you're going to get an excellent education, but you've got access to a, a, a career services group that has no peer and an alumni network that also has no peer, right? And the career services people have been phenomenal in developing um, uh, our marketing majors uh, for internships and for jobs. We now have a, a dedicated person, Kevin Monahan, at Career Services, who does nothing but advise marketing majors. That's his full-time job. So they, from, from career discernment to resume development to analyzing you know, appropriate kinds of firms for you to helping you get internships and jobs, they're just outstanding. And so we help you develop a relationship with them day one. Right? The, the sooner you get involved, the better, from sophomore year uh, forward. Uh, these guys are just a, a tremendous resource that we have. Right. Well, and, and there they are. They've, they've got a website um, and, and certainly take, a, take advantage of it. Uh, summer internships, uh, especially a lot of times students don't think of internships as a, as a possibility through career services, but they're, they're geared to do that. They're finding more and more interesting internships geared specifically for marketing. Oh, and there we go. If there's any questions that you have specifically about the marketing curriculum, what marketers do, what life is like, and so forth, I'd like to answer them. Walker called Buying In. 
And what he does is just write a series of essays that looks at fundamental consumer behaviors. He's noticed somebody use a brand in a particular way. And he just meditates on it, thinks kind of out loud, and, and gives you his take on it. And it's an interesting way to see how other people think and a way for you to argue with him when you feel that he's wrong. You have popular artists that write books. There's a, there's a wonderful novel called The Savage Girl uh, by Alex Shankar. Uh, and the book is all about what it's like to be a consumer in postmodern society. But he writes it as a novel. And so it's, it, it, it's engaging, it moves slowly, and you learn a lot about marketing, even though marketing isn't a subject of the book. So I would say read, read broadly, read in different areas, but always with an eye to how it's helping you understand you know, what consumers are doing out there. Faculty really welcomes your visits to the office. We love to talk about what we do. We don't get to do it enough. And, and I mean, we're happy a lot of times. Uh, I know a number of, of profs have found uh, research assistants early on in their career. So somebody that uh, uh, is a sophomore, I know of uh, you know, cases where a freshman has, has been identified uh, and has developed a working relationship, a research relationship with a prof that's carried through a number of years. And it's almost like having an apprenticeship. Right? It's, it's a way to learn marketing uh, up close and personal. Right? So take advantage of other people's good nature. To a point, right? Any other questions? Yeah. I know that all students in the business school take classes on every subject. Would you just be like a principal's class in marketing? Or would you? Yeah, the, the deans are the best ones to answer this question. I think that uh, given the space limitations, uh, a lot of our marketing classes close out pretty quick just with majors. But there, there are inevitably uh, courses that. Uh, that have a larger capacity than, than we have demand for within the major. So it is possible to take you know, some of those courses, but kind of almost impossible to predict ahead of time what they're likely to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's a good question. Every, everybody, everybody's got their opinion, and for sure there's going to be uh, uh, job cuts. The thing is, it, it's important for marketers to understand consumer motivation right now. Right? What, what is it that consumers feel is absolutely necessary? Right? What are they absolutely unwilling to part with? What are, what are those goods that they think are you know, uh, kind of uh, indulgences that, that are a little bit beyond need, but, but really we can't let them go and still feel like we're human? There's always going to be a need for, for fundamental insight into consumer behavior. And, and since a brand is the uh, company's most important property, I mean, that, that's really where they're making their money, I think that even in this economic downturn, there's going to be a lot of attention paid to uh, maintaining the brand. As soon as companies start competing on price, right, there's, there's virtually no, no distinction in, in essence, quality, or anything else. And companies are reluctant to do that. So I think you're going to see a resurgence of interest in in what brands truly are, right? Uh, and the research area, maybe in particular, is likely to bounce back. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough times for everybody across the industry. Yeah. Uh, I've been interested, I've been, I've been doing a lot of social science classes, and the fact that you're working on the college major, and then the switch, or I was just wondering how you understand the college major to not care. That's a cocktail party conversation. It'll probably take an hour to tell, I think. Uh, Boy, accident, opportunity, and, and uh, uh, alertness, I suppose. Uh, the, the easiest way to describe it is uh, when I came into the field, marketing was either economically oriented or oriented around consumer psychology. Right? The, the, the area was dominated by economists and cognitive psychologists. It became apparent over time that, that consumer behavior was more complicated and nuanced multi-level than economists had imagined or that social psychologists or cognitive, ecology, uh, cognitive psychologists had methods to measure, right? Um, and so we saw in the, in the 80s kind of an influx of people from other social sciences, sociology, anthropology, political science. Geographers came in. Uh, believe it or not, people who were trained with literary backgrounds, literary critics, and so forth each found that they were able to contribute some insight into consumers and into marketing practice that the existing disciplines don't have. Right, right now, there's a huge movement on in design. There are a lot of people thinking that marketing 
is fundamentally a, a design problem, right? And that, that a design perspective can really um, uniquely inform what marketers do. So we have, we have a lot of double majors in marketing and design right now. Uh, a lot of design students interested in, in taking marketing courses. The, uh, you know, the, the short answer is that there isn't a major out there, if, if you pursue it diligently, right, that doesn't suit you to be a good marketer. Right? We hope that you are going to be a good critical thinker you know, by the time that you graduate. And whether your, uh, your major is history or uh, you know, Greek or, or uh, finance, you know, what you have at base is the ability to, to make sense of, of uh, complex data, translate that into information, and make intelligent decisions. Right? So um, any, anything above and beyond the major that you're in that you can bring to the party is going to give you a leg up. I think the, the minors were coming from other departments. We don't we don't have a system in the college now that allows for uh, uh, minoring and other other business. I, I, I even hesitate to bring it up. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's it's easy enough to get a I shouldn't say easy enough. It's it's feasible enough to double in a social science, let's say, or a language and marketing. I'm minor in one of those, but uh, cross functional business classes doesn't have it. Well, I, I did notice that. Marketing majors were double majors. Is that, is that common? Or, you know? Well, I didn't. I, I should look to see if it's more common than not. Um, marketing is like a linchpin discipline, right? It, it, it has a lot to say not only about consumers, but it has a lot to say about other business functions as well. Uh, Phil Kotler uh, at Northwestern University, who is the uh, the, the reigning guru in marketing, right? Um, has always said that your first job as a marketer is to marketize the firm. Right? Even before you worry about consumers, you've got to get everybody else in the, in the, uh, the company thinking like a marketer. That's, that's, it's arrogant on the one hand, but it's practical on the other. And I think because marketing touches so many of the other business disciplines, it's, it's like a social science in that regard, right? It, it, it's like sociology. It says things about uh, identity and roles and, and, and uh, uh, groups and so forth. That, uh, that there's just a kind of a, a natural match there. It's, it's a social scientific way of kind of thinking of the world. Okay, uh, my email address is out there. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have or, or you know, come by at the office. I'm happy to talk with you about the program, help, uh, help advise. Uh, certainly, I can put you in touch uh, with people that have interests that are similar to yours, or if you just got a curiosity in an area, uh, point you to people that can help develop that a little bit more. But please, please go to the website. We've got an awful lot of information parked out there that will not just answer, you know, technical questions that you have, but will really, uh, if you're if you're thinking about careers or wondering what it would be like to be, you know, a product designer or a market researcher or whatever, you can find people in the department. Uh, through that website, they can sit down and really, really tell you what it's like. Okay? Great, thanks. Thank you. Pat, I want to expand on your question a little bit. You asked, uh, would you be able to get into marketing classes even if you were a marketing major? That was your basic question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, however, not as a sophomore. Uh, what we do in the College of Business, we have a series of uh, on every year, however, interactive classes. We carve out seats for non-business students. We call them BAUG, you'll see that designation. And so we have a BAUG seat in accounting, the marketing, the finance, the management. And what they're for is for students who are in other majors who do not want to be a business student, but they want to get exposure to some business courses. As a junior and senior, you get priority on those. So you, when you're a junior and senior, you're registering for, let's say you're a theology major, you can register right along for those business courses that are open at that same time that the BAUG title. So every section will have seats carved out for not business students for that purpose. If you are a business student, is there a different uh, subject coming? Actually, it will be under the subject heading of the accounting uh, induction course, or the marketing, the MARK. So it's the same class. You're in the same classroom, but like five seats will be BAUG and 35 seats will be MARK. 
So, but it is an opportunity because we, we we do realize there are students who don't want to be full-fledged business students who want to get access to those courses. So we do have that set up for that purpose. But we do reserve it for juniors and seniors uh, so that uh, we can make sure before student graduates they get a chance to do it. We want seniors to get the first shot. I mean, it's nice to get it as a sophomore, I'll agree, but if you get it as a sophomore and you stop a senior, senior, that's a little chance. Uh, any other questions about marketing that maybe came to mind?